All right, War Robots fans, this is Bag of Soup coming at you with a, uh, a special video today. As you know, a few days ago, or this past week, the uh, 2.5 update came out. And with that, we saw a few changes in some of the bots and guns and setups. Uh, I did a previous video focusing in on some of those uh, changes that you can uh, check out. And uh, what I wanted to do today was focus on uh, one of those changes. And in the next few videos, I'll be focusing on some, some different bots and testing out uh, their uh, usefulness in gold tier where I'm currently playing. So one of the uh, changes in the last update was to the Gareth. The Gareth uh, shield bot, the light bot, got a significant speed upgrade or speed buff. And I'm going to take a look at my two Gareths I have here. The Gareth used to max out at level a 9 with 60 kilometers an hour speed, which is pretty good. Ahead of the Gepard or Gepard and a little behind the Stalker and the Jesse. And now the Gareth is uh, increased to 64 kilometers an hour or just slightly under the um, a Stalker equal to the Jesse and ahead of the uh, Gepard. So uh, I've got two Gareths. I had one at level 10, I had one at level 6, and I finally started upgrading the other one uh, up a little higher just because that's where it's a little more useful in, in low gold uh, area. So uh, by tomorrow it should be level 10 also, but it already maxed out speed at level 9, which is great. At level 7 it already equaled the old speed of the Depard, uh, uh or the old uh, Gareth, which is great. So I've got two Gareths outfitted, uh, my favorite with the plasma guns, but I'm testing out the rockets. Uh, normally I prefer the rockets on a Galahad if I'm going to do it, or a, a Griffin or a Rhino or a Lancelot. Uh, but I wanted to um, just give it a try on the Gareth and see how it works. So this is the hangar that I'm running with. Uh, and we're going to just do a couple solo matches without help uh, and just see how the... Um, Plasma Gareth and the Rocket Gareth do, and this level is usually around the top of low gold, maybe getting towards medium gold uh, tier, and uh, we'll see how they do in solo play. So let's jump into a match, and uh, depending on what map it is, we'll see if we start out with the Plasma uh, Gareth or the Rocket Gareth, and uh, see how I do here. So we're on a power plant here. Normally with power plant or dead city, I'm going to start with the Rocket uh, Galahad or Gareth, uh, just because it's a lot more close quarters combat and you have a lot of little areas to um, shoot at close range and then duck back out to reload. Now, let me see if I can get around this uh, rhino that's curling. He's got 50 uh, speed when he's uh, his shield is up, so if we're at 64, we should be uh, able to get around him there. Uh, I didn't check for clan tags on the other side, but I don't seem to be facing an entire clan, which is nice. One issue is I am uh, good to get out here in the open and um, run for beacons, but you don't want to get uh, be alone out here. I do see a Gareth that looks like a plasma, so I might be able to take him on. And there's a Fury that direction I'm trying to stay out of range of here. So let's see if I can uh, shoot some shots into him, and he can't really do a lot to damage me with my shield. So I'm going to shoot him until he decides to back off a little bit. If he wants that beacon, he can because uh, I want to protect my shield, and then I will come back and uh, take it from him. Um, being mindful of that Fury over on the other side here. So let's watch for that Fury, and I'm watching over here. Now see, in normal cases, you wouldn't be able to um, defeat a, another Gareth like that. A Plasma Gareth versus a Plasma Gareth, you just destroy your, your own shields together, and that's about it. Uh, in this case, we're actually able to take him down without taking a single bit of damage, which is nice. So I'm kind of carefully watching for that Fury. I don't see him anymore. But I'm going to partner up with this Plasma uh, Galahad and kind of hang out with him. I see a guy around this bend, but I shoot from the right side, so I'm going to be real careful to uh, expose myself there uh, and fire here. Let's wait with this um, Plasma Galahad. We're ahead on Beacon, so I'm not going to mess with going to find anymore for the moment. Uh, and I'm going to wait for a guy to get in range. I'm kind of watching that guy. Let's go ahead and move forward with these guys and see if we can get a shot or two into this guy right here. I'm going to get around the corner real quick. Got a little lag there, as you can tell, but we took him out. And I've barely taken um, much of any damage so far, which is nice. 
and uh, just going to keep watching for uh, other guys to deal with here. I'm trying to make sure I'm staying out of that guy's range. And here comes a guy around the corner. Now, I can't do much to him. I can scare him off a little bit and work into a shield. And then once I've done that, use the rest of my fire to start getting some shots into him before he can reload and try and take a shot at me. I think that's that Fury over there. So I have taken a few shots of damage. I need to be wary of that. But I'm going to continue just to hide and wait and get a good shot in on this uh, Lancelot. He's got workings, but he's not looking my way. And I've got plenty of time to get back around the corner. Uh, and I might as well see if I can help finish him off. He's already done. So let's watch for that Fury over there. And see if we can finish off this guy until we can reload here. And watch out for that Fury over there. Okay, so we got him. I don't worry about that beacon right now. We don't need it. And he's a, an Ancelot, so there's not much we can do to him. Uh, I could try to run into his shield, but his shield is down, so let's go ahead and uh, take some shots in him while we can. He's got Orkin, so I'm going to stay back around the side from him and charge up my shots here. Okay, we're getting hit from the back from that Fury. Um, what I'll do is, normally I'd take that Ancelot, the Lancelot with the Ancel, and take a run at this Fury, because he couldn't really do much one-on-one uh, -on -one to damage me if no one else is around. But because I'm showcasing the Gareths, uh, I'll go ahead and follow the Stalker up there and see if he needs any help. Um, the Gareth is very weak against the Fury. So you definitely want to watch out for that. Uh, he's weak against Tridents and Splash Damage. So your big concerns in the Gareth are uh, going to be a Fury Trident, a Carnage Trident, a Russian Death Button Griffin, RDB Griffin that has a mid-range to Lumbus and CRVs. Um, also, close range splash damage. Now, the good news is with close range, you can usually uh, outrun it, so that's not a problem. You can outrun the close stuff, and then you can also uh, dodge aphids, which is real helpful. Let's see if I can get around to this guy here. I've got enough speed to do this, and in uh, heavier bots, I wouldn't be able to even want to try this. Uh, and he's gone anyway. So we're about to win this match. Uh, I don't know how well I've done because I've kind of been, you know, floating around. Uh, but uh, we survived quite a, a long time here. Let me see. I don't think I have time to get to this guy. Uh, but we did as good as, as we could with a, uh, a, a, a light, fast bot there. We weren't a straight-up brawler and going to go in the middle of that like a Lancelot or something. Um, so let's see damage-wise. Um, yeah, we were playing with another clan apparently, which I didn't notice. And let's take a look at their stats here. Um, Level 10, 11 bots, uh, some 10, 11, 12 guns, let's take a look here, level 12, uh, 12, 12, so these are some high level players we were playing with, uh, which will definitely account for um, a lot of the damage, here's another 12, 12 guy, so basically we got thrown in with a, almost a max level clan there, and uh, they got to, in a sense, kind of hog all the damage. Uh, over there, and I just kind of followed behind with my little Gareth's capping beacons and um, doing what I was doing. And uh, see, they're almost all 12 12s, 12 11s. And even with my little Gareth's, I really got within, you know, 25 to 100k damage of third place there. Uh, but you saw with the uh, Rocket Gareth that he did last quite a long time until I was taken out by Fury from the other side of the map. Uh, and did pretty decent. So hey, we're going to get Power Plant again. And let's just be a little more aggressive this time if we can. Uh, like I said, we, we survived well. We got beacons well. Um, but the point of the game is not only to win and get beacons, it's also to get damage. Um, that's one of my concerns with the Rocket uh, Gareth in particular is he doesn't have a lot of armament uh, for his splash weapons. Now with plasma weapons, you don't really reload a lot, so even with less guns, you can do a lot of damage over time. But with rockets, you've got to fire and hide and reload. So it really does depend on how um, how many guns you do have uh, each time you shoot and hide. Uh, like a griffin or a rhino has quite a bit. A lancelot's pretty decent. Uh, even a galahad has more than a... Um, uh, a uh, oh man, aphids. Galahad has more than a Gareth, so you take that into account. Okay, we do have a Lancelot coming our way, but I don't know if he sees me yet. Let's just jump in and see if we can take some shots on him. We'll take a few uh, shield hits, but we will use our speed to back out of there. 
So we took about a third of a Lancelot out already, and I'm about to already be reloaded. Not fully with my Orkin, but more so with my um, Pinata. I'm going to take my shield down and see if I can find this guy over here. And he's going to run. Oh, let's put that shield back on. And hide for cover. Very weak to splash damage. That's going to be the big issue here. Uh, so you have to be very situationally aware when you're playing in close quarter maps like this. Now here's a situation where we are down on beacons quick. We're going to lose our energy bar real quick. Now, now that stalker has splash damage, so I do need to worry. But while he's reloading, I'm going to go ahead and use my speed to flank him around the other side. Watching for that griffin in the air that maybe I can hit. And like I said, with this bot, I've got the luxury where I can do this. I'm going to start to back off from him real quick because of his uh, Orkins. Stay out of his range. I was able to flank him, shoot him around the corner, and evade almost all of his fire with the uh, Garrett. So that's definitely a um, solid case for why to have him. Uh, and the plasma weapons, I was able to shoot him out of the air pretty good, not have to worry about reload. Uh, this guy's kind of hiding out, so I'll stay with this griffin and see what we can do here. Watching for aphids and jumping uh, orkins and things like that. If you're in a Galahad, one of the weaknesses is you can't run back out of cover quite fast enough to dodge all orkins if you're real close. The Gareth generally can, so that's definitely a plus. But you've definitely got to be situationally aware and be watching uh, for what's going on. I'm not going to really do great toe-to-toe -to -toe with that... Um, Galahad, so I'm going to kind of just uh, see if I can flank him to the side. I'm watching for this guy with aphids also. So let's go ahead and drop our shield and start running sideways to the aphid guy so we can worry about dodging him and um, getting a few shots into him. So, so really, so far, we've dodged a lot of uh, fire, which is nice. Let's see if we can actually get back around and start to... Um, get some shots onto him. We've definitely got to cap some more beacons here. Man, got to have my shield up. And uh, that's always a factor. Okay, so the issue, of course, with a plasma, Gareth, is you are going to deal with... I'm going to watch for this guy to jump. i got to stay in enough range to do it. But watch these guys and see if they're facing the wrong target. And watch this guy coming around the corner. Okay, I got. See, I lost my shield, so I do need to be real careful now. Thankfully, the speed of the um, Gareth means you can still get some neat shots in around corners before you get nailed. So let's try and take this guy out, which a rocket guy couldn't do, but I can. I'm also going to try and flank in a moment and get to beacons here. We'll stay right behind this Galahad and wait for the right moment to um, come around here. Hey, we got an Ancelot. Let's use that to our advantage. Uh, even though I'm pretty weak, we can kind of stay with him and see if he can help us absorb some splash fire and some uh, plasma fire so we're able to uh, help there with that guy and I'm gonna back off obviously a little bit from him but just keep shooting into him and hope he's aiming at my teammates here so that's the best thing that Gareth is good for is stay behind other targets as best as you can of course stay behind other targets and um, the front line of blue targets so they're not targeting you directly they're targeting whoever's closest uh, here's what we'll do now is we're going to bust out our uh, Rocket Galahad and just kind of do a little comparison. No battle's the same, obviously, but we want to see how the, the uh, Rocket version holds up uh, here in this situation. Uh, one thing I like about the Galahad over the Gareth is it's um, not as fast, and the reason that helps is you can aim a little steadier. The Gareth is super fast, but it's got some erratic um, movement that can make it difficult to uh, to aim properly when your hidden target's on the run. Let's see if we can take this Ancelot out here. Okay, he wasn't too hard with two of us working on him. I still got a fully charged Orkin I can use here because we got to really recap beacons here fast. Um, I, I honestly feel like the Galahad is a better choice for rockets than the um, Gareth. Um, Although for Plasma, I really do think that Gareth is not too shabby. So pretty good. Okay, let's go ahead and come around here. we got two guys. Oh, man. Yeah, that guy's going to want to hit me too. 
once again, Golds here is very much about being situationally aware. We're about to lose anyway, so it doesn't really harm me to try to press in on any of these guys. We're going to lose in five seconds anyway. Uh, but those jumping griffins are nasty, so you just want to keep some cover around you in case they do jump out and shoot. Uh, but we're going to we're gonna end anyway here, so uh, not much we can do. I'm not quite sure what level those guys are. We're going to find out, but they seem pretty coordinated there. Uh, so I did better than last match. Most of it was in my Garrett's. Uh, LA guys were on our team. They're very good. Uh, top 10 guys. We like them. And they were 12-12 uh, guys here. Uh, so we know the LA guys were probably pretty high level. Uh, yep, full on 12-12s. Um, and let's take a look at our second place guy here. And he's a 12-12. So I'm sitting here in my 10 or 9, level 10 or 9 Garrett's. And they're all using heavy bots. And I'm running around getting pretty pretty good damage. Uh, that was a short match, obviously. That's why it wasn't higher if you look at both sides. But I'm doing pretty good uh, equal damage with these guys just in these little Garrett's that aren't even uh, necessarily uh, leveled up as high as those guys are. They're, they're getting close weapon-wise, but uh, I have to be very careful with them. And uh, so not bad. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other team. They were pretty coordinated there. Uh, and... Uh, Look, that's pretty impressive. These guys, this guy was an 8-9. And with the Jesse Butch and Doc. Uh, so he must have spent a little cash for those. Uh, so he, he did pretty good there on his team. I know I recognize uh, some of these guys here from playing. He's got a high average. He's a full 12-12. So uh, for whatever reason, matchmaking must think I'm a decent player because they're putting me in my bots with uh, full 12-12 players, uh, which I don't understand. But anyway, uh, the Garrus did pretty good there in that situation. Let's try another match and see how we do. And see if we get Power Plant again or a different map and see if that changes things. Uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure why I get uh, placed with 12-12 so often lately. Uh, but until I can get to be a 12-12 myself, I just have to deal with it. Uh, once again, Power Plant or Dead City, I like to start with Rockets first uh, and go from there. I'm checking clan tags on our side. I recognize some, uh, but not all. And uh, once again, we're going to head this way. So last match, I was saying that from my testing all week uh, with the two Gareths and solo play, uh, I really felt like the Plasma has a better place in my lineup, the Terran and Magnum. The reason is it doesn't have a lot of firepower, but it's got continuous firepower. So you can not only have the speed and the shield, but you can rack up some damage over time with that continuous firepower. So that, even, even if you're facing armor and shield bots, so that's nice. Let's take a look around this corner and see what, ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not going to be pretty. Let's see if we can force him to play into our situation somehow. I don't know how. Uh, aphids, see, I love having the bot that can just run and dodge aphids and things like that. So no one's really moving or doing anything. We're going for center beacon quite yet. We're all just hanging out. He's probably waiting for a teammate. I'm going to use this opportunity to uh, lay some shots into him uh, while he's distracted with my teammates. That's one of the best things you can do with a Gareth is um, be the fly on the wall. Uh, hang out near the uh, enemy. Hang out right behind the front line of the uh, blue guys. And um, pick your targets that way, whether you're using plasma or rockets. So I'm going to kind of hang with these guys a little bit. And then lay into some targets whenever I can so that was good so far he's an ants a lot so whoa so that's real helpful and I'm gonna try and back him up a little bit with some help here and I've got my speed to duck out of the situation if it calls for it so see another thing about the Gareth is they're targeting that guy because he's the bigger threat uh, I'm not seen as a big threat so I get to do a lot of damage uh, over time and they don't even notice what's happening here so I've charged up my other um, I'm use my speed to get out of here put my shield sideways I've really hardly taken any damage yet at the moment and already helped to uh, hurt, hurt a bot and kill two other bots so maybe not a ton of damage if he's he's aphids and terrans he's got splash damage so that's gonna be wicked so I'm gonna need to watch out for them I'm gonna try to team up with these two guys or with this guy and see if I can help him out here. After they've fired all their rounds, I'm going to go ahead and shoot some rounds that way. 
and uh, keep shooting. So really, I've still yet to take hardly any damage yet. Of course, right when I say that, I'll get nailed. But I'm using my speed to kind of be agile here. And let's see if I can cut the distance here and help with this guy. Use the wall for cover. And now put my shield up. He ducked out of there, and there's an aphid that I was able to almost fully dodge. Just took a little damage so far. Let's see if we can close in on this after guy. Ooh, look at this guy. Does he even know I'm there? I don't know. I would love... I mean, I got guys all over me, so I probably shouldn't, but man, wouldn't that be nice. You always have to watch out for jumping griffins, so I'm going to kind of stay back a little bit at a firing range, and then bam. Able to take out another guy. And I'm going to go ahead and turn my shield sideways and get out of here and go to a different side here. Our team is doing well on beacons, and so that's not a problem. I'm still dodging aphids. He got a decent shot on me. That guy's got uh, orkins, so I'm going to go ahead and just stay out of that guy's range and pull back. I really need to get with uh, extra teammates if I can. I ran with my shield sideways just in case. You never know if you're going to be facing some... Uh... I'm going to take my shield down for a moment and see if I can work into this guy at an angle when he can't hit me a ton and just kind of keep chipping into him as he comes this direction here now that I've got a, a teammate I'm gonna take my shield down for a little more speed wait for him to fire at somebody else come around the corner take some shots back off and once again turn my shield for to block his thunder and get out of there Still alive and just took minimal damage. We're kind of bobbing and weaving and doing our best to um, work on this guy. And got him. Helped get him there. So we are still alive in our little uh, bot. We're doing well on um, uh, beacons. I'm going to go ahead and take my shield down and use my speed to come around the uh, left side here. we got a little Jepard. Now see that Jepard Pinatas has about the same stats as my Gareth. The difference is I've now got more speed than him. 64 versus 58. A uh, little more hit points uh, in, this, in a sense, especially when you count the shield more than anything else. I wonder if I can hit any of these guys. I've been in this bot for quite a bit. I wonder if I can just come around this corner and just shoot into these guys for fun. And get out of here and save my shield here. My shield's gone. So I lasted over five minutes in that match. Did quite a bit of damage. Helped take out quite a bit of bots. Helped a lot with beacon control on the left side of the um, the uh, the map there. And uh, now I've got another bot where I can just run back into the thick of battle real quick. Because time is damage and damage is time. Now here's a Lancelot. I can tell that he's probably not going to be able to hurt me a ton because of his plasma. But his, he's sideways. So one of the ways that you can use a... Um, a uh, plasma Gareth to still hurt shield bots is to wait till they drop their uh, shields or turn sideways and you can hit them. I do like I can effortlessly dodge aphids by going left or right in this thing, which is helpful. Uh, a lot of bots don't have that ability, so I, I really appreciate that. So that was another uh, uh, pretty fun match. Once again, not super high in damage. Uh, there's a buddy inviting me in, but let's go ahead and keep checking our stats here. Not super high in damage. I was only about 40,000 or one salvo away from second damage. Uh, let's go ahead and check our top guy who did really good. He's fifth uh, squad in the world. Now keep in mind, he's a guy with pretty much all heavy bots and gold bots and weapons. Level 12-12. Okay, top five clan in the world. Okay, Griffins, Lancelots, Galahads. So obviously he's going to do some pretty good damage there. Here's a guy who has... Uh, that's funny. Okay, I give him credit. He does have level 12 weapons, so even though he's using Japards, Japards still have almost equivalent speed to Gareth. They don't have the shield, but they have um, some great firepower. So his Pinatas and Magnums would pretty much equal my Orkin Pinata or my Terran Mag. Uh, and of course those Aphids are just deadly dangerous against any slower... Um, moving uh, heavy bots uh, in gold tier. So he did a great job to survive. You can tell by his damage rate and, and uh, win percentage, whether he's playing at lower levels or got thrown into a higher match. 
uh, he does pretty well for himself. Uh, but I was only, you know, one salvo away from equaling his damage there. Uh, and then, of course, I had a guy just right next to me in damage. So uh, we'll try and see how we did there. Also, keep in mind as I'm playing, so he's got some, you know, level 8 Fury Tridents, 910 Griffin, uh, 10, 910 Rhino, some pretty big bots. Uh, keep in mind one thing here. When I'm testing out the Gareth's, I'm not just going for high damage. I'm going for some survivability. Uh, normally in a match, you're going to play more aggressive and use your bots to the max, even sacrificing them along the way so that you can keep getting in there and getting damage. I didn't do that. I just wanted to see how long I could survive and, and do damage. So we did pretty well there uh, and showed some of the strengths of the, the, uh, the Gareth, the strengths being the speed to dodge aphids, to outrun orkins, uh, outrun uh, other bots, uh, the shield that I could turn sideways. Uh, anytime I wanted to, uh, and have it in two positions if needed. Uh, good corner shooting from the right. I feel like the uh, Plasma Gareth is a little better because he can um, stay at a longer range, 350 range, and have a continuous rate of fire, which makes up for his lack of firepower. Uh, the Plasma can hit uh, jumping targets, which right now Griffins are a big deal. It can shoot through uh, Ansels on Leos and Carnages and uh, Fujins, bots like that. Uh, and of course you can pick off shield and armor bots just by waiting for them to drop their shield, wearing it down with the other teammates, or uh, hitting them from the side. Uh, so this is definitely a bot that is is I would consider viable for my, my lineup, uh, the Plasma Gareth. Now the Rocket Gareth, like, once again, I'm still getting used to him. He, he runs a little different than a um, Galahad. He runs a lot closer to a, a Jepard or a Stalker. Um, he is strong in certain areas, strong on maps like Power Plants and Dead City, but I don't feel like he's got a lot of firepower to justify using rockets with him. Because of his speed, you have to get used to firing accurately because he turns so quickly. Uh, I do feel like in this case, I might uh, be more likely to run a Galahad with the extra pinata, the um, smoother movement, and uh, depend on that firepower to fire around a corner, reload, and then take a guy out in two volleys, not three volleys, uh, like with a Gareth. And of course, for up close fighting, under 300 range, you're getting into some dangerous territory with a Gareth, and you can uh, uh, get killed quite easily by just one volley from a a Griffin or a Lancelot or a uh, Fury. I did pretty well on Dead City, as you saw, but that doesn't always happen on every given map. So this one, I'm not quite sure uh, I would run it if I wanted to not only get beacons and uh, speed, but also damage, uh, just because I think I get a little more damage out of a, uh, a, a Rocket uh, Galahad, a Rocket Rhino, a Rocket Griffin, a Rocket Lancelot, something like that. But, once again, he's pretty viable. The up, upgrade in speed has helped. Once again, we'll look at the stats here. The 67,000 hit points at level 9. At level 10, we see 71,000 hit points. Plus, you've got the hit points on the shield. Uh, the extra speed helps because uh, it's 64 kilometers an hour when the shield is to the side. And then he loses 20% of that speed, which brings you down to about 51 with the shield in front, which means you can still outrun Orkins. Or pinatas over 50 uh, kilometers an hour so that's great too uh, so I hope you enjoyed that look at the uh, Gareth's and see if that works for you I would say in solo matches they're great you have to um, get beacons on your own sometimes you can't depend on your teammates and so these guys have the speed in a clan match I would probably swap them out for the Galahads that just are a little slower but they have a lot more hit points and firepower uh, so something to keep in mind. In my next video, I'm going to um, take a look at my Galahads, a Plasma Galahad and a Rocket Galahad, and give them a, uh, a run through and tell you what I like about each one of those. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any comments or questions or uh, any ideas, uh, please leave them in the comment section below. Uh, click like on the vid if you enjoyed it, and uh, please subscribe to my channel if you want to see uh, the other videos I've got or be updated on any new things that come out. That's it. This is Jordan with the 2.5 update uh, to War Robots using the Gareth's, and I hope you have a great day.